We are all systems set to go here for the return of Moto X Freestyle here inside U.S. Bank Stadium. Welcome everyone to day two of four out here. Jimmy Coleman in the booth alongside Mike Mason. We've got Diana Dahlgren out there in the field. And Mike, as we get set to kick this thing off out here tonight, one guy to watch for is Tom Pagez, a very innovative rider if he can get out of his own mind. Yeah, absolutely. Tom's, you know, he's got so many innovative tricks on the quarter pipe. He's got all the big tricks on the standard ramps. It's basically up to him tonight. X Games has not generally been his event, but he's definitely feeling right right now. However, one guy that can challenge him, a guy that has never walked away out of a freestyle finish is Jackson Strong. Yeah, Jack has some of the biggest tricks in the business, as you can see here, but freestyle's eluded him over the years. Maybe tonight is his night. He's done very well in best trick over the years. He does have that front flip in his arsenal of tricks, as well as a double back flip, but he's never finished a freestyle comp in the history of the X Games. If he could get one down here tonight, he could challenge. We do have eight riders in the field out here tonight. One thing to do, actually two things to note, your defending champ, Levi Sherwood, you don't see his name on that list there, Mike. That is because he injured his ankle prior to this event, so we will not see him tonight. And also our returning bronze medalist, Clinton Moore, is not in the lineup as well due to injury in practice the other day. But we started off with an Australian rider, Harry Bink. He is making his third, or sec, excuse me, second freestyle appearance out here. Now this up and coming young Australian rider, he definitely has a very big arsenal of tricks and he's known as a, being a bit of an innovator as well so we'll see what he can do here they get two runs apiece mike and it's the best of your two runs that counts the runs are 75 seconds in length yep you said it perfect harry is the wild card of this thing he's the australian that goes for it you know second x games young kid all the big tricks we got to see if he can throw it down here well they start off coming down this feature it's the step down feature with a 75 foot gap to get it started off Massive heart attack flip on one of the biggest ramps on the course. Stepping down like that is always a, a scary feeling going up to it. And completely letting the go of the bike here on jump number two. Nice no-handed catwalk there. He's, you know, he's got a good rhythm going right now. This course is tighter than it looks, so tricks are coming up fast for him. Yeah, time management is going to be key. He takes it upside down for the double backflip and lands that one perfectly. What was it? A couple years ago, there was maybe one or two guys doing doubles, and now it, it's a mainstay in freestyle. It's crazy to see where the sport's going. Well, we saw Levi Sherwood bring three double backflips into one freestyle run last year, and nowadays, I mean, you almost have to have that in your bag of tricks these days. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, right there. That's where you can see how tight this course is. You know, he landed a little long on that trick and almost missed the jump up there. Yeah, get, that thing is, uh, it's been his nemesis here in practice. He dumped the bike over on that one and the, the step up ramp almost gets him again. Yeah, <laughs> that could have been bad to end your run Hang on, on Harry, you got through the double backflip. Don't get, don't let the scrim take you down. <laughs> nice cliffhanger. I like he's got a good mix. He's got the big tricks. He's got the big flip tricks as well as a uh, dislocated oh, shoulder. Dislocated his shoulder. You yeah, saw him missing he, with the flip levers there and then oh, off the no. bike. That yeah, is that, unfortunate. That's terrible right there. I know he has a bad shoulder. I've been on tour with him, and he's been dealing with it. He's been trying to work through it. But, you know, as you can see, just a, a simple trick like that will get you. He's actually dislocated that left shoulder eight times. Right there, executing a perfect double flip, staying committed. you got to stay tucked on a double flip, as you can see there. Once you let your body away from the bike, that thing will just stop spinning. Hey, he just... Without having to ride for about six hours waiting for the other comps to unfold, he comes out in practice and just fires one of those off like it was absolutely nothing and then does it again in his first run. Yeah, pretty impressive what these guys do. I mean, they practiced early this morning. Massive kiss of death flip, which that trips me out how his shoulder wouldn't come out there, but it would come out on yeah, the Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> I mean, it was perfect there, but maybe, you know, strain earlier on in the run and then, you know, wasn't the longevity of the run. It wasn't able, the shoulder wasn't able to handle that. Yeah, the, the body works in mysterious ways. So the best possible run score you can get out here in Moto X Freestyle is 100. Harry's going to check it with a 79.66. We'll see if they get that shoulder back in and if he's able to go in round two. As we take a look at a man from Minden, Nevada, Adam Jones, 2007 Moto X Freestyle gold medalist. He has six medals overall. You're good riding, buddy. Yeah, this pains me to say, but he's actually the oldest guy in this contest tonight. And the only U.S. rider and out here in the field US, as well. Yeah. Why does that pain? Holding it down for the old guys. He's holding it down for the old guys. He's way better I than I say that as he's 33. Yeah, but Adam's still riding great. He's just missing a, a couple big tricks in his run, and he'd be right up there with those guys. But, you know, he, he's a busy guy. He's on tour all year. You know, actually, he's doing a, a fair out in California right now. He flew in last night or two nights ago on a red eye. Straight All right. into practice. Let's so. talk about that coming from a setup that you would, a ramp to ramp setup that you would do fair shows with and then trying to come out here and ride a course like this. Yeah, yeah, and it. 
Well, we'll see his first run in just a sec. But before that, let's get to a life proof, living proof feature. My name is Luke Ackerman, and I ride freestyle motocross. I started riding really early when I was about three and a half years old. And then when I was 12, I was the youngest guy in the world doing the backflip on a motorcycle. I always watched X Games and I still remember how Travis Pastrana did the first double backflip. Oh! It was always a dream to go to X Games and now it finally happened. Whoa. Can't believe it, finally here. Right now, I'm the youngest rider since uh, 2010, and it feels great. This is awesome. <laughs> People say I ride kind of aggressive. I think that's just my style, how I ride, and um, I always push really hard to, you know, make the best out of it. It's awesome to be here. It's my first time at X Games, and I'm super pumped. Well, that is German rider Luke Ackerman, who is an X Games rookie. We'll see him a little bit later in the lineup. Taking a look back to uh, Harry Bink right here. Obviously, they got that shoulder back in place. That is not a that is not a fun thing to go through. Yeah, it's not something you want on your mind, especially double back flipping and kiss of death back flipping. Well, we'll see if he can go in round number two. But back to Mr. Jones here from Minden, Nevada. As you mentioned, uh, spending a lot of time out on the road doing shows, and he starts it off here. Off this 75-foot gap step down. Ah, oh, perfect double grab flip. That's the one trick that still gets him a little bit, as you can see why. I mean, letting go of the bike, hanging onto the back while you're back flipping would be a little scary, but nailed it perfect. But coming out of this run in here, they had to open up that scrim to give these guys some additional space to get over that 75-foot kicker as Adam throws a combo move. Yeah, smooth double McMets. He's known for all his bar tricks, gets through really easy with his length. He likes that step down ramp. I was gonna say, you kind of notice him and Harry, they're using the step down a lot. I think that little bit of extra hang time for him is giving him more time for their bigger flip tricks. So. Well, he's kind of going linear back and forth here. And one point to note about that is the judges are looking for overall course use and he's kind of favoring this one line as of right now. So that could hurt the score. It could for sure. It's kind of hard. The other side's just a super kicker, kind of propped up for the double flip. So he's kind of short sided here, but he's making the most of it. You know, I think he, he understands his expectations. Huge dead body flip there. Um, you know, he's just coming out here to ride and have some fun. And, you know, this is his 13th X Games. I think he's just kind of taking it all in. Down to the final 15 seconds here. See what he caps it off with. Nice, another bar trick combo there. He's going to get back it, up on the step up, step down, and he's going to get one more hit at it there. So he's done some great clock management here to yeah. maximize the amount of hits that he'll get. Yeah, definitely charging the course. Nice switchblade flip there. You know, little, you know, trying to separate himself a little bit from the other guys. And, and to Adams, you know, he, he has one of the best arsenals of right side up tricks and has such great extension. And most of those he can actually do upside down as well. So yeah. he's definitely a well-rounded rider for sure. Yeah, right there you see clearing the bars, no problem. Oh, actually a no-handed Shaolin into a McMets. That, I don't that think is a people, great camera angle of that right yeah, there. Yeah, it is. People don't realize how tricky that trick actually is. You could fly away from the bike on the no-handed Shaolin. So props to Adam for that. Giving it a good tug there. Got to pull hard. Gets his wrists into those uh, flip levers there. Huge switchblade flip, keeping the bike straight under him. Lands are smooth. Good run out of Adam. Like I said, it's probably not going to be a metal run, but I think it was solid for what he was looking for. Well, again, they get two runs. It's the better of your two runs that count. Best possible run score is 100 points. He gets an 84. You hear him saying, hey, Blair, what up, buddy? That's his son back home in Minden, Nevada. Jackson Strong, we talked about him at the top of the show. He has never completed a freestyle run. He's been extremely dominant in best trick, but he's never completed a freestyle run as we send him in. Let's bring in the third member of our crew to the discussion, Diana Dahlgren. Yeah, guys, you know, the reason why this track was extended for the run-in on the standard wrap on the back side of the course was because of Jackson Strong. He said he needed that extra footage to get the trick that he wanted for the gold medal run. So let's see if he can pull it off. Oh! oh. Oh my God. <laughs> That's exactly why he needed that extra run. He needed all the speed he can get to make sure he's all the way over that landing on that front flip. That, that was, was a front flip in a freestyle run, and he put that one down, down feather smooth. Here comes the double flip. And then back to the double flip. This, is, this runs what Jacko needed. You know, freestyle has been his nemesis over the years, and, and right now he's looking solid. I'd say he's owning it as of yeah, right and, now. And going back to that front flip, that ramp's not propped up. It's not adjusted for the front flip. That's a standard, standard comp ramp that he was doing that off. 
And he's still got 22 plus seconds go to go here in this first outing. And he is definitely feeling it as of right now. Got to keep her together. He almost overjumped a little step up there. Calm the nerves down. Once you do big tricks like that, it's hard to get the, the adrenaline back down and contain. Get a little too fired up, get a little over amped. We've seen that happen before to guys in freestyle coming down to the final five seconds. So as he gets turned around here, Behind the scrim, this will be his final attempt. This is by far the best freestyle run I've ever seen Jacko do. All his big tricks. Right, he's got one more to get through before we go. Is he going to do? Oh, a front flip variation, yeah, and he hangs Jacko, on. Jacko, right on. What a run. Oh, what that a run. scared me. I was two, like, wait, you're going to double that up? Oh, no, wait. Yeah. You're going to add a variation. And, you know, he has two runs. He could have done a, a safe run, maybe did the one front flip, kind of got that run under his belt. But to do two in a run with the double back flip, with massive flip combos, that's a that's a gold medal run right there. He doesn't like that word safe or tame. I know. <laughs> right there, the double backflip. I mean, that's got to be a piece of cake to him after doing a couple front flips, you know, just stay in the tuck. And I can't believe how smooth he put that down. I mean, it was feather touch. And I mean, you don't have a lot of room to stop, let alone if you're going to turn around and go through that tunnel underneath the step down to try to get over to the other side. I mean, yeah, yeah. You've really got to be on your A game mentally out of that. Look at locking the back break up there just to keep that rotation coming around. You got to stay tucked one hand off all the way <laughs> off, too. <laughs> nice like extension on the one hander there. Swat and right about flies. there. Yeah, right about there. You're just holding on and, you know, Right there, you can see there's water barricades, the tunnel. So if he goes flying through there, it could get ugly. All right, and we're into the 90s in round number one. Jackson Strong gets the freestyle monkey off of his back, scores a 90 flat, and puts him himself in the top spot. Wow. It's early on. We still got a lot of riding to go. Another Australian in the mix. This gentleman right here, Rob Adelberg, coming off of a snow bike best trick gold at X Games Aspen earlier this year. That was a brand new event, and he walked out of there with a gold medal, and here he is in round one out of two in freestyle. A huge cliffhanger flip to start off. That's been his kind of go-to trick. I mean, it's crazy to start your run off with that. You know, a couple years ago, that was such a massive trick, but... Just get the flow. I know Rob's been working on some stuff at home. Um, looked a little tentative in practice. Didn't see a whole lot. And I, I was just going to bring up varials. He's got some varial yeah. variations. And there you go right there with one of them early on on the run. He's still got Huge. 50 seconds to go. Huge Cali roll there. Coming back to the step down now. Flip levers up. Indy to heel clicker. Nice combo. So judges out here looking for overall variety. They're looking for difficulty of the tricks. They're looking for course management or overall course youth. Use all of those things factor into your score out here in Moto X Freestyle. Yeah, and as you can see, Rob's got a good mix. He's got some good right side up tricks. He's got the varial, which he needs, and some big flip tricks. So keep her together. He's going to have a nice solid run, run number one here. I haven't seen anybody use the quarter pipes out on course yet. We've got three of them here for those of you at home. You've got one on either side of the dirt berm right there, and then there's a third one that's set back a little bit, so you can do flip trick transfers to the backside of that dirt berm. Rob does have one of those tricks oh, in his arsenal. Oh, he's oh, going Rob's for it. got a front flip. Yeah, Rob. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Rob Allenberg puts out a front flip at the end of that run. Yes, he did not do that in practice, you guys. I watched him the whole time. I saw him eyeing it up. I've heard about it. Didn't know if he was going to go for it, but this is X Games. you got to lay it out on, out on the line there, and he did it. I had no idea Whew. he was even working on that or had that in his arsenal, but he just <laughs> threw that in. And at the end of the run. Yeah, when you're most tired, you're all tight. Right there, a nice replay of the Cali roll. That was perfect. Look, uh, getting yeah. back onto the bike. So much to that trick, I don't think everyone understands. I got to calm myself down. I'm I, getting all I, say, I just here. completely <laughs> lost my mind. I'm like, I'm not used to seeing that yeah. out of him. And I'm like, wait a minute. He just went to a front flip. 88.66 for Rob. And that'll put him in second. So what in the world is going on in round number one? And we haven't even gone all the way through the run order. This is our X Games rookie that we saw in our Life Proof feature just a little while ago. 20 years old. Luke Ackerman has been rising through the ranks in freestyle motocross. And look at the way he's starting off this run here, Mike. Yeah. Look at the way he started that runoff. Nobody does that trick as big as Luke. That's that's impressive to put both your feet on the seat, hit the mass, most massive jump on this course. Oh no! Stalling a little time right there. You, you only have a couple jumps in this short run, so you got to make the most of it here. Kind of look down at his uh, bar pad right yeah, there. As you can see, it's probably throwing his momentum off a little bit. You can see he's got his trick list taped to the bar pad right yeah, there. Almost looked like he looked down to check that, like, hey, what am I? What did I want to do next? Yeah. And he, oh, he goes for a he double. He backs it up with a double, no problem. But that's, okay. that's, that's what's hard with this course. <laughs> let me let me throw this at you. You have a mental slip up right there in that tunnel. You're not feeling it. And then you decide you're throwing that double? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably trying to get, get some kind of points. Like I said, first run, he's going to have to kind of throw this one away. And that's what's hard about this course being so tight. It comes up quick on you.
youngest to double backflip on a motorcycle. He did it at age 19 last year. And wow. Huge 360. He is perfectly. really, after that slip up, that little mental bobble early on, he has really recovered as he gets down to the final 10 seconds coming back into the step down. Yeah, and his run's great. He just needs to clean that up for his second run. It's, it's cool. You get two chances, so he'll be okay. He gets under power. He'll get one more go here, and he's hitting that set back. I know. Is he going to hit it? Oh, yeah. And he does. Nice little transfer in so his run. Um, there you go. That's we got to remember, he's 20 years old. This is his first X Games. I mean, you know, doing a massive surfer takeoff ruler flip right there. Probably got his blood pumping a little bit. And he just got to regroup for that second run. I've seen these guys do that time and time again, and it still makes me nervous when I see him standing up on the seat oh, to yeah. get going. Yep. Right there, using the quarter. Nice flare out of there. Spinning good, getting the landing. Didn't get all the way around, but enough to slide that one around and stay on the bike and ride away. But where is this going to put him? We got Jackson Strong sitting in the lead with that 90 flat. Rob Adelberg surprised us all with that front flip in the end. He sits in second with an 88.66, followed by Adam Jones right now with an 84 flat. So where do we put the X Games rookie, or where do the judges put the X Games rookie? I should say an 84.33. So that is going to be good enough to put Luke Ackerman in that number three spot as of right now. Jackson Strong is currently in the lead. First to land a front flip on a dirt bike at X Games. First to land a double backflip transfer in competition. Jackson Strong, three best trick gold medals and three crashes in freestyle. Don't look, don't look away. Here tonight inside the U.S. Bank Stadium, we are looking to crown a new gold medalist in Moto X Freestyle. This is round one out of two. We have three riders left to go. You're taking a look at a rider all the way from Japan. This is Taka Higashino, who happens to be the proud owner of three, count them three, Moto X Freestyle gold medals. And those all just happen to come consecutively, by the way, Mike. Yeah, yeah, Taka's one of the most technical riders out here tonight. You know, he has a lot of big tricks. Let's see what he starts off with here. Like I said, you know, rock solid backflip just to start your run. No big deal. Going for it. Looks like he's eyeing up the quarter now. Taking it to the quarter pipe here. We haven't seen too many riders use that one. So with the flare out of that one, kind of a flat spin type flare. The flare, it's a backflip with a 180. Yeah, got to kind of 180 it to get it spotted back on the landing. Taka's another one of those guys that does have a body varial in his arsenal of tricks. Body varials have become very big over the last couple of years. Yeah, body varials are huge. I mean, this sport's just gotten so crazy. Like, everything Taka's doing right I mean, what's that, his fourth jump, and he's done four flips? You yeah. Know, it just runs basically upside down, and everything's just gnarly. Completely over the bars, parallel, and look at that in the Cordova nice, nice, flip. Yep, nice Cordova backflip, using those levers to make sure he stays connected to the bike. All right, so winding oh, down to the huge, final. Huge 50. kiss of death flip, floating away from the bike. If you notice, he's kind of kind of with Adam Jones there. He short side himself on the course, not getting over that kicker, but maximizing what he's doing for sure. Wow, and just you there. see how he's grabbing the cutout going into that and completely spins around. Spins around, losing vision of where he's going for a split second. That's always a little scary thing. He'll drop the stomach for sure. Oh, nice enough with a can, oh. one-hander, one-hand lander. One-hander lander looked like it was a little bit of an afterthought right there, but yeah. still throwing that one in there for good measure. Yeah, went a little deep as well. That's all right, though. Solid run out of Taka. And by the way, those consecutive wins, he's the only other guy besides Travis Pastrana to get consecutive Moto X Freestyle wins in the history of X Games. Yeah, he, he's paid his dues for sure. He had a good run there. Right there, you can see a nice, nice varial. All right, check out this shot brought to you by Pacifico. What's he got? Yeah, nice dead body Look back. At that. Getting through the bars, looking straight down at the landing. That's always a, a fearful trick when you can see the landing as you're coming up to it. Not that I would know I don't do it, but yeah, that's what I would guess that it's kind of scary. Feet over the bars like that, trying to get it back over the bars and back on the foot yeah, pegs right yep, there. there. There is a lot going on there. All right, so best possible run score is 100 points. So he'll get an 86.33. So that'll slide him into third right now. So he bumps. Into third, so it's strong. Adelberg, Higashino, you're one, two, three. But here we go. This is a guy we were talking about at the top of the show, Tom Pagez from France. X Games has not typically been his strong point. He is a freestyle master in other events. He's an innovator. He's got an arsenal of some wild, one-of-a-kind tricks. Can he put it all together here in Minneapolis? He looked strong in practice.
Let's see what he does in his first of two outings. Yeah, you're going to want to pay attention to every jump on this run. It, Tom is a very unique rider, very calculated rider. He starts off in a different spot and than what we say, and that's not going to help out at all. Help it. Yeah, what that was, in the world's going on there? Just know. a straight jump? Something's wrong with the bike. He is frustrated right now. He's looking down. You see the body language. I don't know what's going on, but a straight jump is not going to help your cause. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was loaded up or something. Sometimes when you're sitting up on the rolling like that, you know, them two strokes, they will load up a little bit. And the clock continues to run out. <laughs> all right, out of that, he's like, I'm just going to do a body burial. Yeah, just probably getting a feel for all his tricks. He's, he's down to one run now. That's going to kind of be stressful going into it. But I mean, as long as everything's OK with the bike in his head, he should be good to go. To his credit, he's been in those type of situations before at other events. He's extremely dominant on the X Fighters World Series, and he's got several tour championships there. But starting off with that straight jump, coming back with the body burial, then another straight jump. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on. We'll have to dig into it a little bit. Like I said, I don't know if it's a bike issue or just, you know, Tom, he kind of gets in his own head sometimes. Maybe he was going up to the ramp and something just didn't feel right. So last little bit of time here. That's a bummer to see, too, because he, like I said, you're going to want to watch every trick this kid does when he does his full run. So. Well, what we were talking about, what's going to have to happen now is he's going to have to completely erase this from his memory. He does tend to get in his own head sometimes. And when you get him on his A game, he's almost unbeatable. And he, after time, he's yeah. that was a risky gamble right there. Yeah, like you said, though, I think he's just trying to clear his head and make sure he's going to be all good. I mean, he's putting a lot of weight on his shoulders now for that second round. I understand the clearing your head part, but would you want to throw that double after time and put that risk on the table? I wouldn't want to throw it at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I meant. I know, I know. Yeah, see, he, he's frustrated, but one more run, Tom. Keep your head in it. So he gets a 44 flat, so that is going to be a throwaway run for him. But hopefully he can shake that one off. And we can see the Tom Pages that we are accustomed to. In round number two, there is Josh Sheehan, who is our last rider in the rotation. But before we get to his run, Josh tells us more about his training style in the real cost athlete profile. G'day, I'm Josh Sheehan, Ride FMX, and I'm from Donnybrook, WA. All of my training is on the family farm here in Donnybrook. I've got a little bit of room next to the orchard here, next to the river. I've got some good clay, got a landing, a few dirt jumps, a bit of a supercross track, and a foam pit now, so everything I need. Focus for this year's X Games would be more FMX, I think. But in saying that, best trick is really important too. Uh, I'll try and work on some new tricks, but hopefully you can tie them all together in one banger FMX run. I mean, a podium is great, it would be awesome, but definitely want to win. Everyone will have to step it up to, to have a chance, but I'm definitely chasing that win. I've only had one so far and I want another one. The Minneapolis crowd's a great one because you get a lot more noise in the, in the indoor arenas. It's a massive competition and it's kind of the pinnacle of FMX. So we're all looking forward to it and I'm definitely excited for it. Well, there you go. The Aussie took the words right out of her mouth. The pinnacle of FMX. And he gets to ride last in the run order by being your silver medalist from last year, your gold medalist, Levi Sherwood, as we mentioned. Not here. He's uh, watching this one at home on the couch due to an ankle injury. So Sheeny gets to take us out of round number one. Six medals and five X Games appearances in three different disciplines. Starting off with a nice technical trick right there, the no-handed Superman. I don't, that's a standard trick, but it's a tricky one. And here we go into the quarter pipe for him. What's he got off the quarter? A flare right. variation. Yeah, a little flare indie. Nice little starter trick for his run. sheehan has got big tricks, but he's got a lot of competition for him with those front flips. Right there. Whoa, overcooking the, the ruler flip a little bit. That's what happens when you work out. <laughs> See him adjusting the flip levers right there, as and you see, mentioned earlier. Those things help out in the different flip variations to just kind of secure the wrist and help him get back on the bike and come around out of the rotations. Yeah, and right there, he actually missed the, the little step up there, and that's going to eat you his run a little bit. That seems to be a problem for a couple of guys out here. It is. Maybe it's the addition of the tough blocks. I don't know. It's a mental I, game. Yeah, <laughs> I know. He it's, dropped that bike earlier. You know, practice. It's crazy because this course is so simple to the eye, but it is so tight that these guys have to be spot on and just a little long on that landing there missed the step up. 
And by the way, he's putting in some work out here, not only on the course, but he also is the one that ran out on course and put Harry Bink's shoulder back into socket. Yeah, yeah. Harry pointed to it, Josh saw it, like, I got it. He came out, popped that Josh back and goes place. out and starts doing massive tricks. Who would have thought? Oh, he's got those big biceps. Yeah, I'll just shoulder right back in. And here, oh, oh, did the hands come yeah. off? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wrist jar on that one. He was into the bars, but he rides out of that one. Double Holy smokes. Variation. That Shaking was, off that wrist, that one hurt him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was his second over, over rotate, over jump. Great run. I mean, Sheeny's always known for you know solid runs, big tricks. But like I said, when you're back, oh, that was no handed. Yeah, that's in the first rotation. Foot hooked under there. Make sure he sticks to the bike. You don't want to be peeling apart from that thing mid double flip. And then right Spot here, on the landing. Yeah, and just you can see back wheel first, kind of slaps the front end down and. Probably just stretch his arm out a little bit. Great run, but when you got front flips and all that other stuff in front of you, you, you got to lay it down. Some G forces on the impact right there. You see him very tentative with the wrist there. So that'll give him an 87 flat. So that'll put him in that number three position. This is a huge shakeup for me. I never anticipated Jacko leading and Sheeny and Tom, you know, mid pack. Well, that is where we stand at the end of round one. That is your current leader, Jackson Strong. As we mentioned before, has never completed a freestyle run prior to this event starting tonight. He currently sits in the top spot. He's getting set for run number two in our X Games Moto family, though. We're looking forward to the Harley Davidson ho Hooligan Racing and Harley Davidson Flat Track Racing coming up on Sunday. Let's check in with Jackson to find out a little more about that event to cap off the weekend. G'day, Jackson Strong here. We're with the baddest in the Harley game, buddy, and uh, having a look at what flat track is all about. I haven't had very much flat track experience at all and zero riding on, on pavement at all, really, so this is going to be a pretty long morning for you, I think. No, I think you'll adapt fast, you know. You, you... Don't say that, yeah, that's <laughs> bad luck. I'm actually building a a Harley at home, I've been building it for five years. Something that I started out doing, but never kind of got to the end of it. So hopefully this will be the inspiration to finish it. So these are 750 Harleys. They're set up for flat track. You know, new bars, get the bike positioned how we want them. The pegs up a little bit higher. Obviously no front brakes. When we come around the first corner, you're gonna see a lot yeah. of this going yeah. on. <laughs> I think you should just get out there and, and see how you feel. good out there dude. Thanks brother, that was fun. It's yeah. definitely um, holding your respect for what you guys do. Coming off a dirt bike, it's um, different, but so much more power than a dirt bike. I think um, another 10 to 25 years riding one of these and I might be nearly as good as you, but until then, I'll be uh, standing there with a the buddy flag. <laughs> Thanks dude. <laughs> Visit h-d.com slash xgames for a free sticker. Here inside U.S. Bank Stadium, night two of four here, X Games Minneapolis 2018 Moto X Freestyle. We've completed round one out of two, and it's right now, it's an Aussie sweep of the podium. Jackson Strong sits in that number one position, who we talked about earlier prior to tonight, had never completed a freestyle run in the history of the X Games. He's followed by Rob Adelberg and Josh Sheehan as of right now, but it's best run that counts. We get to do it all over again, and this man from Australia as well, Harry Bean, he gets the Iron Man award for me right now because he dislocated his shoulder in his first run and he's gonna take a second run here Mike Mason yeah this guy's got the hugest heart out here right now I mean dislocating a shoulder and then right there you see his first trick is a rock-solid backflip I mean your shoulders pretty involved in that trick right into a heart attack flip I mean, you're trying to muscle around a 225 to 250 pound dirt bike. You see the kinesio tape on that left shoulder right there. He's dislocated that thing eight times and does another double flip. Oh so smooth. Gosh. See, and he's got to be really careful on those landings because he lands a little back wheel first or something. It's going to pull his arm right back out. And going back to uh, round number one, it was Josh Sheehan who we saw at the end of round one that actually popped his shoulder back in. Josh just told the medical staff, hey, I got this. Yeah, that's what friends are for, right? I would have tried to say that in an Australian accent, but I would have butchered it. So yeah, we would have messed up. Leave that to the professionals. Oh, and then, oh, oh, 
my goodness! I didn't oh. think he had enough juice to get that one around. Yeah. My gosh! Nice variation on the double flip. He's going for it, man. You know, Harry, he's young. He understands that <laughs> he flew all the way over here for a reason. I, come on, you dislocated oh. your oh. shoulder, and then short. you do two double backflips in one run. Yeah. It, things are getting scary in freestyle motocross these days, Very where you're scary. seeing multiple double backflips in one freestyle run. We saw it out of Levi Sherwood last year, and the trend is continuing here in 2018. Yeah. That, that's a solid run for Harry. I'm pumped for the dude. You know, that's I've dislocated my shoulders many a times, and I don't want to ride again. You know, it's just it locks everything up around. It kind of just makes it. It doesn't so much hurt as just tightens everything up. Kind of is uncomfortable. It's such an excruciating pain, and when it happens, it's a terrible pain. But then when it goes back in, that's no fun either. No, exactly. Yeah, he, that was actually a, a great run. I, smoother I, than I, his <laughs> first run. Maybe the injury slowed him down a little bit. And it's dance party time. Oh yeah. Smooth double flip there. I mean, just just staring right Think at the bars. Think about how much crazy. you're yanking on those bars to get that bike around twice. Yeah. Like I said, though, I think the double flip, the pulling with the shoulder is all right. But right there, you have to land both wheels down. If he gets back wheel first and slaps the front end down, he could risk popping that shoulder back out. Completely letting go here with that awesome replay. Look at that shot. That yeah. is that just gives you full perspective of what that trick is all about. Look at those abs. That, you don't you look know, like that. That's what. Hey, when you look like that, you're young, you can ride shirtless yeah, out here at the X Games. Yeah. Throw a little Kinesio tape, get out there, do some dance moves. First run score for him was a 79.66, has him in seventh. No matter what the result is, I think Harry definitely gets the hero award. Oh, for sure. I mean, did you see, I mean, he dropped, he dumped the bike, and was in, you could see the amount of pain that he was in. <laughs> and then, like we said, Josh Sheehan just comes out and says, I got this. So it's strong, oh, now Adelberg, Sheen, your top three as of right now as we await the score in this field, by the way. Harry, the only Aussie without a medal, a Freestyle Moto X medal, 86.66. So that'll get him from seventh up into fourth. Not enough to jump him into podium contention, but again, Iron Man award to Harry Bink right there. You're a tough fella for doing that. Adam Jones, our friend from Minden, Nevada. You look at that stat. The only guy representing the USA in the field here tonight, Moto X Freestyle, and the oldest guy in the field as well, the elder statesman, if you will. Yeah, he's getting up there for sure, but he lets his riding do the talking. He's, he's still solid. Started off once again, massive double grab flip. You know, go back to what we were talking about in round number one. I still think it's absolutely amazing that he's doing shows out there in Sacramento at the Cal Expo, riding that ramp to ramp setup, and then comes out here and adjusts to all this as well. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the setups are completely different. That ramp out there is a little more mellow, a little more front end high on tricks, where these ones kind of want to buck you, you know, your back wheel up over the front wheel. So he had to adjust basically in practice here. He's going to ride this, fly back tomorrow, get back into the fair, and have to readjust all over again. <laughs> you know what, though? He's, uh, that's that's veteran status right there. He adjusts quite well. And uh, with a smaller course like we're seeing here inside with tighter spaces, that's something that a uh, guy like Adam Jones and several other riders in the field are uh, used to riding on some of these smaller X Fighters courses when these guys are in the confines of a bullfighting arena. Yeah, and kind of going back to Luke, you can see Adam, you know, the seasoned vet here, he's in a flow. He's going around the course quick. He's not looking down at a bar pad, messing wow. with levers, stabilizer, nothing. He's kind of in a good flow, and that's where I think Luke needs to step up his run, and maybe it's just experience. So the final couple seconds ticking down here for Adam Jones as he goes into this step-down feature one more time. The Cordova oh. flip to a late Superman. Yeah, nice little combo there. Like I said, these runs for Adam, I mean, he, He's not front flipping, he's not double flipping. He understands where he's at, so he just wants to lay down some runs that he's happy with. Hey, he rides the way he wants to. You talked to him about some of that stuff, he's like, I, I have no desire to learn any of that. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do me. Awesome shot right there. Kiss of death backflip, staring right at us. Look at those eyeballs are just open. He was eyeballing was that landing eyeballing right there. Us, yeah. Little panic rev to get the bike back around. Comes in perfect. Yep, here's the, the flip combo, the Cordova. There was your three-in-one combo at the end. Yeah, good little ending to his weekend. You know, those were two solid runs for him. Like I know, like I said, he knows what's his expectations. I'm old. <laughs> Why is he stealing my? He's stealing my words. He says, "What's going on? I'm old. 33 years young. You are the elder statesman in the field. You still have all your hair. You're not that old." <laughs> so he's got an 84. For both runs there, that'll leave him down there in seventh. So two riders down here, six left to go in the second and final round here of Moto X Freestyle. And 
That is Jackson Strong, who currently sits in the lead, the only guy to score in the 90s. And we keep telling this story because it's relevant. He's been dominant in years past in best trick, but prior to tonight's event, he had never completed an actual freestyle run. And boy, did he lay down the gauntlet in that opening round. Ah, and the issue with his goggles there. That's not good. Well, at least he's got run one to, to rely well, on there. He's in the yeah. 90s, so he's, gonna have to, he's not going to use the rest of this run. He'll have to sit and watch the rest of this unfold. I think he's pretty happy with run number he one. He has to be. You know, I mean, I, I can't see what else he could actually do bigger. Everything was perfect in that run. A front flip, a front flip combo at the end. He had a double back flip at that run. A full 75 seconds, and I mean, again, to get that monkey off of your back, I mean, that's not a fun stat to come in with. I mean, he'd gone for it. It's not that he didn't have the skills, it's just that he had mishaps and crashes in years past. And like I said, he's done it before in best trick, but makes it happen in that first round tonight. That was huge for Jackson. It was very huge. He's got medals in best trick, and, you know, I, I know he really wants a freestyle medal. He's got three best trick golds and two silvers. Time to add a freestyle gold to it. Well, he's also in a hooligan on Sunday, so he's not done for the weekend. So, oh, he's a over souvenir for the fans there they're, they're as he gone. tosses those goggles. So, a weird finish in round number two for our current leader, but he does still sit in that number one position with that 90 flat, and that is what everyone else in the field is going to be chasing here tonight, Mike. Definitely. And, I, you know, I would have liked to have seen a second run out of him there just because Tom didn't complete his first run, so you don't know what he's going to do. Tom could come in and knock him off, so it would have been good to get maybe a couple extra points there if he could have. Another rider who's looking at helping out for that potential Aussie sweep of the podium. He surprised us all in round number one. Rob Adelberg sits in second place with that 88.66, and he brought a, brought a brand one, brand new one to the party with that front flip that we saw at the end of his first run. Yeah, and that's awesome. To me, that's what X Games is all about. Like I said, I watched every single jump of practice the last two days, and I saw Rob eyeing it up. He looks like he might be over it, too. Wow, all right, so maybe these guys are feeling like, hey, I got round it one. done in round number one. Yeah. Self-preservation yeah. is the name of the game. Don't want to risk it, so Rob Adelberg's going to call it right there as well. That's showing that kids are actually getting smarter. Hey, you, you don't want to go out and, and risk it again. I'm sure Rob, like, same with Jacko, is happy with his first run. And Some of these guys are riding multiple events. It's all about, you know, weekend management. So we've got uh, more riders still to come jackson strong still in the lead we will have the conclusion of moto x freestyle when we come back to u.s bank stadium x games minneapolis is brought to you by hotels.com you do you and get rewarded and toyota let's go places Welcome back inside U.S. Bank Stadium here, X Games, Minneapolis. We're at the halfway point of round number two of Moto X Freestyle, and Jackson Strong is your current leader with a score of 90, followed by Rob Adelberg and Josh Sheehan. We have four riders left to go as we get set to welcome in for his second and final run our X Games rookie, our lone X Games rookie in the Moto X Freestyle field out here tonight. He hails from Germany, Luke Ackerman. And again, Mike, look at how he's starting off this run. Yeah, and <laughs> look at the trick he does out, almost under rotating it. Oh, he needs to hang on to it right here. This is where he stumbled in run number one. He's got to get this run clean. I think he has a chance to battle Sheehan for third. He's he had a good, good first run. He had an 84.33. Maybe just looking to clean a couple of things up here. Yep, good heart attack flip there. Again, the reds, runs are 75 seconds in length. The best possible run score you can get is 100. Two runs, best run that counts. Like we said, he's a rookie, and he put all the weight on his shoulders for this run number two. Usually you want to get a safe run, get one out of the way, and... He's, he's doing great, though. He's, he's getting uh, the pressure handled. And if you're thinking, hey, he's a rookie, he oh, just no. did a double oh, back. No. Oh, man. No. Well, that one, he got away from that. Oh. Or he got away. The bike didn't come down on him, and he gets up and walks away. Yeah. That's, that's great to see. Great to see that he's up. That thing just never came off right. You could see it right when he was off the, off the quarter. The point it was about to make, he's a rookie, and you're wondering, double backflip? He's the earliest guy to do that, a young guy to do that at age 19 last year. I mean, he, you know, he he had a good showing here. Look at that trick right there, coming Look off at your the seat. extension. Yeah, standing off your seat. That's the biggest ruler flip we saw here all night. Amazing trick. I mean, he went so big, he almost under rotated that big step down. So that would have been kind of gnarly. 
But yeah, just right here, I'm not going for a variation, it looks like, and it, it, it just never looks spun like right. It was like an, an afterthought. Yeah, it was kind of just a dead spin off the takeoff. Maybe the, when the feet came off, he was thinking no-footed oh. knack or something and just yeah. decided to stop at I, that point. Sometimes you're so concentrating on the, the variation that, you know, you don't actually think of the rotation, and that but, looks like maybe what happened to him. Well, you could see it slow-mo there. It was ugly at one point because that bike could have come down right on top of yeah, him, but exactly. he missed it, and then he got up and walked away. So that was huge. So yep. good job, and welcome to the X Games, Luke Ackerman in your rookie appearance. Taka Higashino all the way from Osaka, Japan. As we mentioned before, he has three freestyle gold medals to his name as we welcome him back in for his second and final attempt. Starting out very similar, rock solid backflip. It's crazy now with the front flips and the double flips, you know, a rock solid backflip's almost overlooked. Well, it's that, still one of the gnarliest flip tricks he can do. That trick actually got him a best trick gold medal a while back as well. And Taka, he's he's a lot like Adam Jones. I mean, he's one of the best freestyle riders in the world. As you can see, every trick he does, everything's extended perfect. You know, he doesn't take the shortcut on anything. Every flip trick's big. Every right side up trick's big. He's just missing those couple of massive tricks that the other guys are doing. Nice dead body flip. Going a little deep, but nothing wrong with that. He rides out of it smooth. So 30 seconds left here for Taka. Actually, best trick silver medal. Correct myself there on that prior stat. But yeah, like things that have been happening lately in freestyle, I mean, it is insane. We're seeing multiple double backflip combos. You're seeing front flips get thrown with relative ease here in freestyle. I mean, things are getting crazy. Yeah, it, it is getting crazy. And just like right there, rock solid backflip, a Cali roll, a kiss of death backflip, a dead body backflip, and, and he's still gonna be overlooked. Not by the riders, though. The riders all appreciate what Taka does, just like Adam. They're both solid riders. They're just, they got to get into the foam pit or the airbag and get those couple big tricks. And that is going to be it as time expires right there for Taka Higashino. Right here, the rock solid backflip. Like I said, one of the most technical upside down tricks you can do. Finding those grabs, letting go of them, grabbing back on. I mean, your bars could turn, you could under rotate, you could miss your bars. Anything can happen right there. Taka executed it perfect. See where he grabs the cut out there on the left side. Awesome angle of the Cali roll right there. Sticking to the grab, spinning 360 on his body, his bike stays straight. Like I said, you're actually taking your eyes off the landing for a bit there, which kind of drops the stomach. Yeah, and it wasn't that long ago when we saw that trick burst onto the scene and a couple of the other guys started to throw it into the mix. Now you have to have a body burial and a whole lot more if you're going to find yourself on the podium back at a freestyle motocross event. You know, Taka can't be bummed out. He knows he rode great. I mean, like we said, X Games is a pressure event. And he didn't well, mess up any tricks. It's just lack of the double flips, the front flips. Speaking of, of pressure, it's all on this gentleman right here. Yeah, this is Francis Tom Pagez. As we mentioned in round number one, he has not had much success at uh, X Games. And he had a little slip up in round number one. And again, for this run, we're going to welcome in Diana Dahlgren to the discussion. Hey guys, yeah, I spoke to Tom during his break and you know what, he just accidentally shifted into third and then it messed with his mental state. So he was just trying to reset and hopefully he can pull together a solid second run. Well, we're about to find out right here. Oh, right oh, out of the gate, a double nice, backflip, double. no hander. Nice, that what? was huge. Like I said, watch every single jump that Tom does here now that he started off good. He has everything to win this contest. Yeah, not exactly. Together. As we talked about before, he has all the ingredients. It's just what mental state is he going to be in when he gets out there. You saw him in round number one after the slip up, shaking his head. He did throw a couple of big tricks, but that ended with a straight jump. But he is on pace right now, Mike. Oh, massive three on the step down. Yeah, he, he looks, it's good to know that he shifted in the third on accident. It was just. Uh, you know, an, an error, that's fine. And now he's lining up for one of these quarter pipes, and this is it. This is where he's known for throwing one of his innovative tricks, and there it goes, the bike, the bike flip. flip. Perfect, stomps it. Oh. Tom's actually shaved weight off his bike. His bike is 33 pounds lighter than a stock bike, so that's how he's able to kind of throw that thing around. He's going back to it. Coming down to the final 15 seconds. Nice alley-oop. This is a solid run. This is the Tom we were talking about all night. This is the guy that we've talked about that has won multiple X Fighters championships in the past. He's got to hang on for five more seconds. He's the guy that could shake up this Aussie podium, and his time expires. He has done it. boy, Tom. We knew you had it in you. Still going. He's feeling it. That was, he needed oh, that. There you go. You can see that he's feeling it, but man. Uh, 
That's that pressure. mental hang-up that we've talked about, sometimes that's enough to just throw him off for an entire night. We've seen that time and time again at competitions in the past. I think he's worked too hard for this one. He, you know, like I said, it was just a mental error, and you can fix that. So right out of the gate, in Look a double backflip, he takes the hands off. Yep. Like I said before, the foot's hooked in there to keep him glued to that bike. I don't know how the bike keeps rotating when their hands are off it. It makes no sense to me. It, none of that makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, perfect length. each year, it's like you think something can't be done, and then it gets done, and then and it becomes the norm. Yep. Bike flip, grabs the seat, pulls it back under him. Like, these are video game tricks. Hey, exactly. You know, there's I mean, there's, there's nobody else doing these tricks, and that's why Tom's run is so unique. And then, again, yeah, that was it. <laughs> The oh, he's 60. We didn't see the replay of so again. Oh, 92.33. Yeah, so we have a new leader. Uh, so there goes your Aussie sweep of the podium. The Frenchman sits in the top spot right now. Jackson Strong slides to silver. Rob Adelberg uh, slides to bronze. And we have one more rider left to go. Unbelievable. The pressure was all on Tom right there, and he came through it. Oh, look what at a the run. look on his face right now. Like I said, he's worked too hard for this. He's dedicated his life to this, and there was no way he was letting another so it happen. comes down to this last gentleman right here, last year's silver medalist. He gets to ride last because last year's gold medalist, Levi Sherwood, not in the mix out here tonight due to an injury prior to coming into this event. He gets to take us out of the competition. Can he jump back in to podium contention here, Mike? Yeah, he's got to clean up his run just a little bit. He does have the big trick, the double backflip, the 360. It's going to be a lot. Front flip, you know, you got to knock that off, but massive double grab flip. Yeah. See, he just wastes a little bit of time. You, you need to be smooth there. You've only got seven to eight tricks max on this course. Great. No hand, a double flip there. All right, so he's down to his final 40 seconds here. He looks good so far. He just needs to get it going a little bit. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh a little short on that landing. 360 DC grab Indy over the kicker. Back That's in. technical. Swabbed around there, and he but hangs this, on. This is what I'm talking about right here. A lot of back and forth and a lot of stalling. Those other guys had a good flow. Even Tom hitting the quarter pipe twice. He just had a good flow to his run. Well, yeah, I mean, Tom's used to getting into it in the turns quick, and, I mean, he maximized that 75 seconds. Nice three-heel clicker down the step down. I don't know if this is going to be enough to knock Adelberg out. I don't think so either. I think Rob had a cleaner run, and then with the newness for him and that front flip, that 88.66 is going to be a hard one to break, so I'm going to walk that plank with you. Yeah. Excellent run from Cheney, though. Like I said, just needed to be tightened up a little bit, but... You can't knock the guy. Double backflip variation. Not, not at all. I mean, he rode great. That's just the state of where we're at in yeah. Moto X freestyle these days. I mean, we've talked about it multiple times, and I can't stress this enough. I mean, things have gone to a video game level. You see something brand new, and then it becomes the norm, and then we move on to the next crazy thing. Yeah. Day. Right, that's awesome. That's Sheeny's signature trick right there. He's the only one doing that over the kicker. That's technical, and then you can see here, he kind of dives it in a little bit, swaps off the landing. So... 87 flat for him for run at number one. It's got him just outside of the podium. Remember, he was bumped down after Tom Pajes jumped up into that number one position. So the Aussie sweep of the podium is out after Tom Pajes gets that 92.33. See, your current leader, Tom Pajes, on the left. Josh Sheehan on your right, who we just saw, so he'll get an 88.33, so he'll knock on the door of Rob Adelberg, but it's not enough to get in. So Tom Pajez is going to walk out of here with an X Games Moto X Freestyle Gold. And talk about pressure. He had to get it done in that second run, and boy, did he rise to the occasion. He did. That was probably one of the best freestyle comps I've seen in a long time. A lot of new tricks. Tom came out, did everything we expect him to do. What a night. Yeah, I mean, that was huge for him, as well as Jackson Strong taking the silver medal as well, and Rob Adelberg walking out here with the bronze. So what a great night for all three of those guys, and congratulations to them.